Hey, wrestling fans, welcome to the One Wing Wrestling Podcast, where we help you navigate the complex world of pro wrestling, bring you the best matches, world class wrestlers, and news you can count on. At One Wing Wrestling, we bring the elite to you. My name is Christian Nye, and join me as always is Mr. Bill Cutbush. Bill, how's it going? It is going. I fly out tomorrow to Victoria, and uh, today has been uh, somewhat, um, shall we say, uh, hectic Mm. because, you know, I had a conference, I had an online conference I had to go to all weekend, which meant my wrestling watching time was like severely cramped, which means I had to cram a whole bunch in a hurry. And I had all my other stuff I had to do too, you know, like the other thing I do for a living and, uh, you know, packing and solving Air Canada seat problems and all kind of all kinds of other fun stuff. So uh, hectic, but hey, it's all done. And I am hyped and ready to talk about some really good wrestling. Ooh, How are you doing? Um, well, uh, this weekend, I actually went uh, on my first outdoor bike ride because, you know, it's been like summertime in Toronto recently when it, though it's not summer. Um, and I realized that uh, I did my first ride um, the max power way. So <laughs> if anyone knows what I'm talking about, you know, there's the right way, the wrong way, the max power way. And, you know, isn't, isn't that just the wrong way? Yes, but faster. Uh, because everything that could go wrong went wrong. Um, I have, uh, Naveen kind of told me, he's like, you know, normally when people make mistakes throughout their cycling career, they like to spread it out. Right? When they're, when they're, when they're, you kind of just did everything all in one day. I'm like, that's right. I'm efficient that way, right? So, you know, nice. I, like I did the embarrassing fall where I was like literally standing beside my bike and, and, and tried to clip in and fell off the bike. So it was fun uh didn't uh, take my nutrition properly so i hit a wall pretty quick like uh like not not physical wall but i hit hit the wall um which means like after that i was like just dead um yeah it was fun you know the good thing is my my bud naveen he, he actually was like dude we're doing this together we're, we're gonna he's a, he's a cyclist and he's like we're gonna get through this and and like uh legitimately he physically pushed me up some hills. He rode beside me and he just put his hand on my back and was pushing me up some hills. Jesus. Um, yeah, so we, we did we did about 30 kilometers on... Um, oh, you didn't do a century? Saturday. What's wrong with you? No, 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 no. Yeah, so, so for anyone listening, they know uh, who knows uh, I'm doing the ride for cancer. And it's, it's, uh, it, it's basically two days, 100 kilometer rides per day. Um, so yeah, we're preparing again, it's in June. Yep. So, you know, the, the, we did 30 next week. We're going to aim for like 50 and we're going to keep doing that for a little bit. Um, and then, uh, but the good news is, you know, I wasn't in pain in any way. Like I thought my body would just fall apart. It was just like, I was, ex- I was tired. I was exhausted. Mm-hmm. I, and and I, I felt like I just couldn't move my legs after a while. Cause I'm like, okay, what's going on? Like, I don't not tired, but my legs are just not working. Uh, I, I guess that wall really does exist. It, uh, it, so it does. Good, Muscles good, will literally yeah. just stop. Yeah. So I, I know it now. And then, but the problem is after when we finished, I started walking around thinking I was going to like collapse or something like that. No, I was fine. You know, started getting some more uh, nutrition into me and uh, yeah. And I thought the next day I was going to be dead and sore. No, no, I was fine. I was Give okay. it a couple days. Yeah. No, I, I'm still okay. Like, this, 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 was, this, was, this was Saturday. This was Saturday. Okay. So, well, so that's I mean, good. That's Monday, good, right? Um, the 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 thing is that you know with with these bike seats, they're always like, uh, they're really hard, right? Like, apparently, you can't really have soft seats for rides like these. So the main concern for a lot of people is like, hey, your your butt's gonna hurt after a while. My butt was fine, but then I've been training for a while, like for a couple of weeks on that seat, so I guess it didn't bother me. So well, yeah, that was, you, you've been out doing it ahead of time, right? So that yeah, yeah. Helped. Yeah. So, yeah. So that was fun. It's fun. You know, I, my, my knees a bit banged up. Um, it was fun. You know, the problem is, is that I was telling my niece because, you know, you know like, she fell the other day as well. And I said, you know, I fell and I smacked my head against the ground, but I was wearing a helmet. So nothing happened. Like I literally just like a, like, you know, the yeah. back of my head. Hit. But I'm like, you don't feel anything because you're wearing a helmet always wear a helmet when riding your bike so it's, it's just like well no i'm just trying to get that into her head um uh, but yeah no it was you know what honestly it's it really is different you know what i mean like there's one thing training indoors like on like any type of bikes that mm-hmm. you know you have right um versus just feeling the breeze on your face and stuff like that like there's just something about just being in the outdoors that just 
makes you oh, feel yeah. like a kid again, right? So I'm, I'm like, it was so much. We went, we went, to, we actually were in Scarborough and just went down these paths in Scarborough, and we ended up like five kilometers away from the Pickering power plant because I was like, what is that over there? He's like, that's the Pickering <laughs> man. That's the power plant. Do you want to go? I'm like, no. But he's like, but he's like, yeah. He goes, that's we rode quite some time. I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. that's awesome. Didn't didn't feel it, but uh, yeah, you know, uh, fun times, you know. I guess, again, just riding your bike, just feel like a kid again. I just, I love it. It's, it's, it's so, so much fun. So yeah, more training, but that was, that was my weekend. I, again, everything that could have went wrong, just max power away. That's all. That's, right. that's, that's how I do it. But I think it's important for us to all keep in mind why you're doing this in the first place, because right. you are doing the ride to conquer cancer and it's an extremely worthy cause. And, uh, you know, if any of you out there want to help support Krishna, please do. Uh, I will again put the link in the podcast description for any of you who would like to support Krishna. And uh, yeah, I mean, help it out. Cancer, good cause. Donate today. Donate today. Exactly. But we're not here to talk about that stuff, Bill. No, we're not. We are not. What we are here to talk about today is professional wrestling. (laughs) That's right. Specifically, we're going to talk about the news of the week. Generally, that doesn't involve WWE because you can (laughs) find that everywhere. Um, True. Sometimes we talk WWE, but today we are not. If it's um, if it's important, and if it's really really important, yes. And you know what we're going to do as well is Krishna's going to give his AEW roundup, going to go through uh, some matches you might want to check out from the past weeks. You know, Dark Dark Elevation uh, Rampage, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm going to give the Japan report, going through some matches you might want to check out in uh, New Japan and Stardom, and giving you some New Japan and Stardom news as well this week. So uh, yeah, and there's always our wrestlers of the week, our match of the week, not necessarily in that order. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, yeah. So we got some we got some news to get into, though. First off the top, uh, you want to get into it, Krishna? Let's do it. Okay. Well, first, Bill needs to rewind his notes. Okay. (laughs) Now that he's done that, we can start talking news. Well, there is a, a Fightful Select has reported that CM Punk is very likely to return to AEW. And they've said that the likely date for that will be the June 21st show in Chicago, mere days before Forbidden Door 2. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Meltzer, however, noted that the situation is still tenuous because as of the last Wrestling Observer newsletter, he pointed out the issues in the dressing room had not been resolved. Um, this weekend on the Wrestling Observer Live podcast, Andrew Zeri uh, confirmed the return as well saying CM Punk is coming back and he said I know for a fact that Warner has been told he's coming back they are very much aware of the situation he had recently said he is willing to return to AEW and he wants to make it work so the issue here is that he's willing to work with the elite members and I know as of the time I was told Andrew said and as of early this week there was no intention on the other side maybe Kenny a little bit more than the Bucks but I know they do not want to work with him. There's been no dialogue between the two sides either regarding sitting down and making this work. Um, So that's what he said in that point. The working idea apparently also is that the new Saturday show that hasn't been announced yet would star punk and it would involve splitting the crew like a brand split, um, Mm -hmm. a little more than just a soft brand split too. Um, Zarian reported that the show will likely involve Punk and Jericho, and Jericho apparently is willing to make a storyline work because of the money to be made. Now, some of this stuff is like borderline rumor stuff. Who knows what Jericho's thinking exactly? But um, these were all very interesting. I mean, the fact that he said, I know for a fact Warner has been told he's coming back is very interesting. Yeah, and the funny part is that, you know, Chris Jericho yesterday... Um, someone tweeted at him, you know, uh, it's something about, you know, wouldn't you at a certain point be willing to work with anybody if it means that you're making money in sort of lives? And Jericho just retweeted, he, he tweeted at the person saying, not everyone. Now, this could just simply be Jericho just obviously working everyone at this point, which I think it, it, it is the case. Like, you listen, at this point, everyone's reporting he's coming back. That's, that's mm-hmm. not the issue anymore. Now the issue is, okay, so how is he coming back? My so, so so what I've been hearing is that this show on the Saturday potentially could be like a two hour show, like a show like Dynamite almost, right? Now, if that's the case, what's the purpose of Rampage? Mm-hmm. Why would you have a show just a couple a couple hours after or, or, you know it's not a couple hours, but you know what I mean? Like the next hours day. after uh, yeah, yeah. A- after after Rampage, you're literally gonna just destroy that show. Or maybe it's a plan. Maybe Rampage is just not the money maker they thought it was going to be and as we said like, like for for AEW one of the issues is 
they just don't have much enough screen time, like actual TV time to tell a lot of stories. That's mm-hmm. why you kind of have all these like mini stories going on. You have to watch this show or like being the elites and all this other stuff. They like get a full story. So listen, I'm if CM Punk comes back, CM come CM Punk comes back. Do the Bucks have to work with them? No, they don't. They don't. That's that's their choice. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Now it's. Fu- I heard this the other day, and actually, it kind of resonated with me uh, as well. And and the person said, "It doesn't matter whose side you're on, CM Punk, or the the elite side. This is Tony Khan's fault." And I I couldn't disagree. Sorry, I couldn't agree more because he, Tony Khan let his locker room get out of order and all this stuff happened right mm-hmm. there's a certain point like you listen we call vincent man like a you know a tyrant or whatever there's one thing we didn't hear about this stuff from wwe now are there more eyes and stuff like that like everywhere now yes right did cm punk go on a live show and blast the the, the elite yes he did <laughs> that wouldn't have happened with with the uh, wwe but hey that's that's happened we can't fix the past now we all we can look at is what's gonna happen in the future right my question is is everyone keeps saying cm punk is the biggest draw AEW's had saturday show is gonna prove that it's going to prove that if cm punk is as big of a draw as people are saying he is i want that saturday show better be better be better than dynamite has better know that's not a chance the elite will be on dynamite there's there's, and i know that you know that Mm -hmm. but apparently there are a lot of people out there who believe that he this guy by himself will draw now they may forget that his first feud maybe with jericho they forgot about chris jericho right yeah like being a draw as well but listen for business wise this is great for AEW. sure i think i think it's great for AEW. i think Mm -hmm. that more storylines you know, listen, as much as I, my feelings towards Punk have soured a bit after everything, I'm not saying he can't help the younger people. I think mm-hmm. he really can. His promo skills are fantastic, right? He knows how to work matches. So if he can help the younger and, and it seems like he did that when he was there, right? So if he can like like Jericho, like Moxley, help the younger uh, uh, up and comers, great, right? Give us better storylines. Am I over this? Is CM Punk coming back thing? Yeah, I'm over this. Like either you come back or don't. I don't care at this yeah. point. Whatever, right? I yeah. just, I just, I'm so tired of this stuff. And and yeah, there are egos. We know that they're they're wrestlers. But like again, part of me feels like Tony Khan. You're paying these guys a lot of money, a lot of money. Control yeah. control your roster. That's all I'm gonna yeah. say. Yeah. Sure, sure, to a point. Um, I, I also think that there's, I mean, I, I see what you're saying about Tony Khan, and you're right, it is It is ultimately Tony Khan's responsibility to make mm-hmm. sure things run properly in AEW, even if it's him personally or through his, the people that he has appointed yeah. with the authority to do these things, right? Yes. But the fact is, he was sitting next to Punk during that press I know. conference. I so, know. period. And you know me, before that, I was like one yeah. of the world's biggest CM Punk fans. I agreed. Yep. Agreed. I have totally soured on the dude after this because i just found that entire episode unprofessional Mm -hmm. really under and subsequent actions unprofessional and you know i i gotta go i gotta agree with what brian uh, alvarez and dave Meltzer were talking about Mm -hmm. this week on wrestling observer you know basically this is like a gaslighting of uh, AEW by cm punk and his friends like with dax coming out on the podcast saying well he wants to work with them of course what does he have to lose at all yeah of course he wants to work with them he started the fight <laughs> i mean hello he's the one who went out there on the stage and tore up AEW. he's the one who went backstage yeah. and started the fight he's the one who came out later with a whole bunch of other trash okay yeah. the elite have kept their mouths shut yeah. almost the only thing the elite did was that match the trios match against the lucha brothers and Pac death triangle where they were like doing the cm punk mannerisms that is the only shot they have fired, and it was, and the problem is, it wasn't a shot at no, Punk. It, it was shot at the fans. Yeah, that's hundred percent. It was completely done to heal them in front of the yeah. fans in Chicago. It was masterful, but it wasn't a shot at Punk. Mm-hmm. Kenny, mm-hmm. when he had the opportunity to say something, just said, "Listen, I've moved past it." Yeah, right. Yep. These guys 
have taken the high road mm -hmm. they have been by far the more mature and now they're being like almost backed into a corner because of this whole public oh coming back oh i'm willing to work with them are they willing to work with me which yep. is the implied sentence under it right mm -hmm. and well according to what uh, what's out there right now and again I just want to state this is almost denies dirt sheet level stuff in it some is. ways because we have no confirmation yeah. of the vast majority of this. And I want to stress that. I mean, one person said, and I mean, he's reputable. One person said it's a fact that Warner Brothers has been notified. Well, you know, it's likely it's it's likely that he's correct. Right. Mm -hmm. It's likely punk is coming back at this point. I can't imagine why. I guess they just want the money. That's fine. Money. Yeah. Great. Jericho working with them. You know what? Jericho is a consummate professional. Yeah. yeah. So, Agreed. you know, Agreed. plus how much do we know about all the stuff that happened with Jericho prior to this was a bloody planned work to bring him back <laughs> even Not, up yep. to the deleted Instagram. Yep. Post, Cause that, that post slags Moxley and Jericho. It does. And Jericho is a stooge. Right? Yes, exactly. So, you know, you got to wonder if that's the case and they've done that. Kudos to them for one of the most masterful work shoots I've ever seen. Yep. Right. Because that generated so much buzz and so much interest. And if that's what's happened, and it just struck me now that that may be the case. Damn, guys. Like, holy crap, way to generate you know, interest. You know, the thing is, is that, like, I, I keep thinking about the um the the money here and, and, and i i know i know there are people involved so sometimes you shouldn't you should take the money out of the thing but mm -hmm. I, I think about tony khan and how much money he's spent on this yeah there's a certain point where you have to put your foot down and be like guys i get it your your feelings are hurt i don't care about your feelings mm -hmm. i'm paying you a lot of money right yep. there's, certain, there's like even look at miro what's happening there right it's yeah. like dude you're getting paid to stay home because you're you don't want to participate in this yeah in in the, in this these storylines because yes. you're going to put young people over look at jericho look at moxley look at the eight look at aew in general that's what mm -hmm. this is about you're you're building these fresh faces so you know what i i you're right you're totally right we're speculating based on speculation and confer i'm quoting here con confirmations from the reporters of, of wrestling right nothing's been confirmed by aew or anything Correct. right so yeah. like yeah, hey does it make sense that mm -hmm. if you want to get another show you tell warner brothers that guess what cm punk is coming back he will headline that show right. yes oh, that makes a that makes a, a nope. million percent sense right so so like i get it Listen, we're past this. We're over it. Um, if the Bucks don't want to work with Punk, what are we, what are you gonna do, right? Now, I do, I do feel time heals all wounds. We've got to remember this. Only this didn't happen a year ago. It's been less than a year, right? So, so guys, let's let's give it some more time. And it's been in the news so much. It's like I can imagine the Bucks and even listen, even Punk's end. I can get where they're like, are we still talking about this garbage, yeah, right? 100%. So yeah. I do feel that, listen, if Tony Khan, well, as, as I've guaranteed, is going to sign the Bucks and Kenny, um, like, they're eventually going to have to work out this stuff. And again, time. Because they, they see mm -hmm. time apart. If if they see they can change the face of wrestling, you're telling me these guys aren't going to work out things? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Right? So... Well, no, I mean, and you're right too. It's, it's, look, if Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels right. can hug in a ring together, these guys can work this crap out because right. what happened to Bret Hart is substantially worse what than happened what happened here. to the elite or, or CM Punk or AEW or anything. I, okay. I mean, the Montreal screw job, people are still talking about it to this day. But I would like to point out, you mentioned something earlier about, you know, WWE would not do that. They would not have their performers mm -hmm. out there slagging. But you know what happens? They end up like saying, I'm leaving behind the scenes. And yeah. then the company slags them publicly. Yeah. Stone Cold That's Steve true. Austin, Bret Hart, Sasha That's Banks. True. <laughs> I mean, like <laughs> those are those are three examples from different points in time. Yeah. No, you're right. And the same thing was done to them. Yep. Right. Oh, you're, like you're, you're Steve right. Austin took his ball and went home, they said. 
Right, and then look what they dragged Bret Hart through. But you know what? Things like <laughs> never mind the Ultimate Warrior. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. And then they had to course correct on that one. Listen, I'm not here stating WWE is a perfect company because no. we know that's far from the truth. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that for a guy like Tony Khan, who's, who you can tell he loves this, loves wrestling. He loves it, mm -hmm. and he's genuinely trying to help the wrestlers. Right. He yes. like, hey, he pays them when they're injured. Right. Mm -hmm. He yep. like pays for the, like you have to. You, uh, there's a certain point where it's like give and take. Right. Like I'm paying you five million dollars to sit at home and your respect is I just don't want to work. Yeah. Yeah. OK, sure. Yep. Like like I know you have a lot of money, but it's, so there's a certain point where it's like this, this is not worth it. But back to like CM Punk and, and, and the on his way back. We said it like I think Billy, you mm -hmm. called it a while back that hey, he's, he's probably coming back. Like it, it, like this is probably gonna happen. Um, and it's ha it seems like it's happening June twentieth. It's all the June the June show. Well, I mean that's their, that's complete theory, speculation theory, theory but, from Fightful Select. Yeah. But that would make that would kind of make sense, would it not? Well, it does have make sense. Chicago, it's it's a Chicago show. Have him show up at uh, at Forbidden Door as well. Like you want, like I mean, it's not like Toronto needs to get sold out, but if you want to get pay per view buys, mm -hmm. right? Like, like do you guys start thinking about that stuff? Like, yep. Hey, you, you, and and uh, one last thing on this entire topic. A lot of people kind of are like, you know, as you you kind of said, the Bucks aren't. They don't say anything and stuff like that. They take in the high road. There's a lot of stuff these guys are not supposed to be talking about legally. There's yeah, a reason course. why, why mm -hmm. Tony Khan isn't, doesn't speak up about this stuff because there were like there were lawyers involved in all this stuff, right? Charges were laid and were, were thrown out, whatever. Mm -hmm. But legally, these guys cannot talk about this stuff. So when you see these comments being made by Punk, I'm like, dude, what are you doing? So that's that's another thing why I think you are 100 percent mm -hmm. right. We're totally being worked, and Jericho it's a distinct possibility. I think that that given once they decided he was coming back, I mm -hmm. think that's when the work began. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. Well, I agree with you. So we'll see what happens. I could be wrong. I mean, this could be completely correct, but it could be also the greatest work shoot in wrestling history. Who knows? You know what's going to happen? We're going to yeah. find out. We're and yeah. Hey, listen. <laughs> All I I said from the beginning, if this causes great storylines for AEW. Mm -hmm. I am all there with that stuff. I I'm good. I, I want. One could say this. you're all in. I am all in, not all out. I am all in. Okay, good stuff. Well, we do have some not so great news. Uh oh. Well, some good news. It's good news, and then it's kind of <laughs> tempered good news because Will Osprey has been cleared to return to the ring. Now he. Uh, this was. First of all, it was announced by 1PW. They announced today that Osprey will return in action against Bobby Fish on their Saturday, April 22nd show mm -hmm. um, in a match for the promotion's world championship. So he's mm -hmm. doing an indie. Um, but he did release a video early to earlier today on Twitter in which he's in a car and he just talks to the fans. Okay. And in that video, he notes, and I'll just summarize it quickly. Basically, he's saying, you know, my arm's working, it's got range of motion, but he goes, I can't wrestle like I used to. He goes, I can't do some of the stuff I used to do. I can't do shooting star presses anymore. You know, he's like, and I and I have to, I have to change the way I wrestle. You know, he says, I'm going to do this as long as I can, but I want you all to know the ride may not be that long. Now, this is my boy, Will, right? Yes. Notice how I'm wearing, I don't know if you noticed this, but I'm wearing my Kingpin yes. t-shirt uh, yes. for Will. Um, you know who also said this, a very, very similar thing? Mr. Kenny Omega, when he was coming back. Mm -hmm. Interesting, they both are almost, I they think the identical same, like the, the, the same thing, right? Which which is true, which is, I, you know, again, I'm not saying it's not true. Right. But at, at the level these two wrestle, are mm -hmm. you going to notice it? No, because the thing is, is that both of them have developed their storytelling game to such a level that it's like they could do like a third of the moves they used to do in the ring. And like, you know, you want to see their greatest hits kind of thing. But yep. I don't see a shooting star press as one of Osprey's greatest hits. Right. Yeah. Like the hidden Agreed. blade. Well, that's not him jumping around. Right. I mean, you know, it's it's a lot of his big finishers and stuff. And I don't know why his finishing move name is now currently escaping my brain. But um, but yeah. You know, Why his big his one, where he lifts the guy up, smashes him down. Oh, my God. It's his version of the one-winged angel, essentially. Yeah. 
and why uh, the storm stormbreaker stormbreaker yes stormbreaker, stormbreaker. yeah the stormbreaker the and um yeah i mean the stormbreaker one winged angel i mean both of those are, are fairly safe moves to execute you got to be able to lift the guy but you know they're fairly safe moves to execute um you know his handspring moves are are not dangerous in any way so and that it, it means you know they can pull out some stops against each other in the ring and, and save the really good stuff for that but i mean i've seen some pretty pretty safe osprey matches that are still off the charts amazing so and the same thing with omega these two guys honestly i, I love them so much and there's sometimes they're so full of crap and i absolutely love it because yeah kenny omega comes back and he's and he's like you know he's never he's never gonna be wrestling the same again and then will osprey Double kicks him right in the face to give him a black eye. I was not out, right? Puts his <laughs> I head be through surprised. a table. Don't yeah. forget that part. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if at the next match they do something really brutal because it's out there now. They're they're not going to be able to wrestle. These are these two are so they're so perfect, right? So you think I we're being worked it. again? Oh, eh? I don't believe the word these two say at all. I, at I, all. I, I, well, and I actually, I actually think there might be a little bit of truth in what he's saying, but I think it's coming out of a place of him just feeling like I've been battered a lot recently, you know. And, but and you but know what? Going uh, with the whole character he's playing this year too, right? With the whole, oh, I don't know, man, wrestling. Yeah. I'm coming down, and I'm giving it one more year. And the guy breathes wrestling. But you know what? The thing is, is that the reason why I'm, I'm saying like maybe you won't even notice because. Like, as I said, like Kenny, when he first came back um, and he kept saying, oh, maybe I'm not going to be the same Kenny. And then I watch him do his greatest hits and I'm like, what are you talking about, man? Come <laughs> on. Right. So so just like when he came back and um, what's his name? Uh, uh, Rush's brother, uh, Dragon Lee, mm -hmm. smashes him right over the the the, uh, the guardrails. Right. And I'm like, this guy's fine. This guy's perfectly fine. But you know what? Like, so. You heard about the. I'm, I'm not sure if this was on the the list. You heard about the New Japan changes, right? To the card, um, because yeah. of what's his face getting it getting. This oh, so have they have they actually changed the card? Yeah, it was it's actually the next. Well, why don't why don't I just like run through the top of the class and we can go, combine go, go, the go, two? Go, go, so yeah, go. you mean Hiroshi Tanahashi, right? No, did you mean to? Oh, then... I meant sorry. I apologize. So before you go there, I'm actually talking about the Will Os. Something is going to affect Will Osprey. So uh, oh. this this past weekend, I think yeah. uh, Lance Archer was supposed to face off against. Um, oh yeah, Juice. yeah, no, but that's that's because Juice got Juice got disqualified, uh, disqualified in the <laughs> match. I was going to talk about that later, but I'll do it okay, now. Cool, okay, so he, cool. he had a match with Fred Rosser, yeah. and uh, essentially he uh, because Fred, what happened was Fred Rosser had a mm -hmm. seat at ringside with Tony Storm's name on it. And he's like, that's <laughs> reserved for Tony Storm, and Juice comes out of the back and just. Beats the hell <laughs> out of Fred Rosser, right? Like just just destroys him, you know, suplexes on the floor, you know, gets that chair and like beats him down with it and stuff. So so essentially, um, you know, what happened was uh juice the, the match was a no contest. And but what happened was New Japan then um storyline suspended Juice Robinson, yes. so he was unable yeah. to compete. So they gave his spot to Fred Rosser, but then Juice Robinson interfered in the match with Lance Archer and Fred Rosser too. And Fred Rosser lost and Lance Archer moved on and then cut a promo on Kenny Omega. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He ain't fighting Kenny Omega. No, like, let's not. be real. Come yeah, on. You can do Listen, Lance Archer. I, I like you. Yes. But, but I like the role you play, but you ain't facing mm -hmm. Kenny Omega. That, no. that role or that match is reserved for Mr. Will Ospreay. Yes. So, so, so was, were those the changes you were talking about? Yeah, that was a change I saw in New Japan to, uh, to, because they actually posted Mm -hmm. changes to the card and right. then they had they actually had the the uh match against uh like and the way they did they do it they do it mm -hmm. it makes sense they show the match like they show the name of the match and then yep. they show changes too and i'm like okay that makes sense and and the match was the the lance archer versus um um uh, juice and then juice has been this has been disqualified yes due to yes <laughs> yes for for basically being juice robinson but also defending his wife Mm -hmm. For those of you who didn't know, Tony Storm is Juice Robinson's real life wife, which also explains a lot about why he's in AEW now. Yes, yes, yeah. it, it it does, it does. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, um, the Osprey thing. I'm glad, I'm glad he's cleared. I'm happy. Like when when you said bad news, I was thinking, oh my god, is he injured again? Did something happen to him? And then you're like, <laughs> no, he's, he's he's back, but he's he yeah. says he's not going to rest. Listen, Will Osprey at. 80% is better than 
almost 100% of the people. 99.9% right? of other wrestlers. So, so let's be realistic with that. Will Osprey, if you like, he he's just on another level. Like, again, he's he's on the elite level. Like, so, I mean, yeah. yeah I, he's listen, in, like, I, upper I, echelon elite. I just want to I just want to see Will Osprey versus Kenny Omega at Forbidden Door. That's yeah, all yeah, I want, Yeah, me guys. too. Me too. That's, <laughs> that's all, it's all we want. It's all we want. Um, <laughs> but there was also another injury in New Japan this mm. weekend. Uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi was injured. Uh, and it was during his match against the Motor City Machine Guns and Aussie Open at Capital Collision on Saturday night. Um, he was pulled from the Philadelphia show the next night as a result of it. It apparently is he broke his ribs during the match, though they're they're unsure exactly when in the match. So yeah. Brian Alvarez went through it like all and, and figured out it was likely mm-hmm. um, during the Aussie Open collision spot outside the ring. Like they'll pick the guys up and kind of like the, you know, like the reverse piggyback and then they'll mm-hmm. run around that like each of them goes the opposite direction direction to collide the two other partners with their backs yeah. Yeah. and they think that might have been where the end i mean it's a pretty safe move they yeah do it continuously, but that might have been where uh tanahashi there's a couple other spots to we point out where it might have happened but no matter they what exactly tanahashi what. kept working the match with wow. broken ribs including executing what alvarez called one of the worst high fly flows of his career <laughs> but then he executed another one and took knees to the ribs oh. like Look, he's clearly an old school wrestling guy. He's like, match must go on at all mm-hmm. costs. So he worked the match with broken ribs, but there's no word how long he's going to be out or the extent of the injury. This could affect his spot at Forbidden Door. I don't know how long it's going to take to heal. We've been given no information about it. So, okay. Yeah. Well, well first off, Tanahashi, we hope you get better. Like I said, that's the main thing. Indeed. Now, I'm going to be selfish here. So I'm going to be like, I saw Tanahashi last year for Bindor, so so I'm 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 good. Um, but just just for who he is, I totally understand like the draw he brings in. Um, so I so I I totally get why this is a big blow basically to New Japan, right? Um, but the good news is they have a lot of great wrestlers there, regardless, right? So they're gonna be fine. Like I mean, Tanahashi broken ribs. Like I mean, I mean that's months, right? So I mean, I don't know. If he, he's probably not gonna be able to wrestle at Forbidden Door. And if he is, that's maybe he has John Cena's healing factor or whatever. He is the John Cena of New Japan. Right? Well, there you go. There you go. But um, but I, I yeah, that's, you know, the main thing is like, hopefully it gets better. Like some things are just freak accidents. Who knows? Maybe even mm-hmm. that little knee to the, to the ribs could have broken. It could be anything, right? Even though it looks like he didn't even hit, like maybe may not hit. That could have done it. Right? You never know nope. where, where, where it happens. But um, yeah, I mean, hopefully he gets better. Like, yeah, that that kind of sucks. But, yeah, you don't like to see injuries to anybody, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. We hope he gets better soon. Yeah. Agreed. Quick recovery. <laughs> well, to shift to some local Toronto news, um, we do have a Smash Wrestling card coming up on April the 29th here in Toronto at the Franklin Horner Community Center. It's an evening show this time. And uh, I thought I would just provide the card for you guys. Uh, tickets are still available. Uh, Krishna and I will be there. So if anyone mm-hmm. wants to come and say hi, please feel free. Um, we, have, uh, we have the lineup, though. And so I thought I'd quickly run through it with you. Sure. So we have CXR, Chael Connors, and TJ Epics taking on main event, Midas Black and Jay Lyon. Um, CXR, you know, we know them. We saw them before. Very quick, young, high-flying tag That's team. Nice. Um, main event, they are an American team. They wrestled recently for GCW and MLW. Uh, they've been on AEW Dark multiple times. Okay. Yep, 2019, 2021. Okay. Um most recently, as far as I'm aware, but yeah, they're they're apparently a good young, talented tag team as well. Um, you know, main event is spelled M A N E. They kind of do a bit of a uh, African lion thing, I think. So. Got it. Got it. So, yep. So, uh, yeah, that's that's that match. I'm I'm looking forward to that one. Seems like these guys would be good. I know you're a big CXR fan. Yeah, they were good. They were good. Like from what I saw, like um, again, well, the one match that I saw with them, high flyers. They remind me of like the the uh my goodness i was gonna say evan born Whew. deep cut there guys matt seidel <laughs> type wrestlers but not but obviously not matt seidel level but like um yeah quick fast like like my style of wrestling um yeah so that should be a good match 
We've got The Driver taking on Jay Freddy. Jay Freddy is an American wrestler. He's been wrestling since 2008. He uh, was on uh, AEW Dark in 2021 as part of a tag team taking on The Hybrid 2. And he has appeared at Smash before. But he's taking on the, I think he's still debuting because he didn't make it across the border at the last show, The Driver. So I suspect this will be uh, a victory by The Driver. I don't think it's going any other way. Yep, same. Same. They seem yeah. to have brought in like a, a good hand to work against mm-hmm. him, it looks mm-hmm. like. So we have Carter Mason, King of the North, taking on Danny Jones. Danny is a wrestler who's been around for 10 years and most recently in Rev Pro. He's from the UK. Oh, yeah. Carter Mason was good. I mean, this is our last match. He got just totally the last show. Sorry, he got crushed because he was kind of like a the add on for the driver, uh, oddly, yeah. right? Um, so uh, yeah, th- this uh, this uh, Mason's a good wrestler. Right, so I'm looking. That's a good. That'll be a good match. Yep. Oh yeah, and and, and it looks like uh, Danny Jones. Uh, you know, he's been around a while, but you know, he works some of those Rev Pro events and stuff. And these guys are good. So uh, I I suspect this will also be another really good match. We have Puma King, who is a uh, luchador from Triple A. Okay. Taking on Charles Crowley. Oh yeah, Crowley's good. Like Crowley's yes. really good. Um. Uh. That was. That's an interesting matchup, babe. Eh? Yep. Versus Crowley. That's uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. That that was probably going to be a, 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 a and, and it's going to be entertaining for sure. That, mm-hmm. uh, just those these two. Um. But yeah. That that's okay. Okay. That, yep. that sounds like a good match. Oh yeah. No. I'm I'm quite looking forward to this. We'll mm-hmm. see. We'll see if uh, what kind of uh, luchador Puma King is, mm-hmm. and see how he does against Charles Crowley. Then we have Psycho Mike, and he's taking on Scotty Too Hotty. No yes, way. that Scotty too hotty. Uh, he no returned to the independent way. circle in 2022. So it is, in fact, Scotty too hotty taking on Psycho Mike. The That's... worm versus the body slam. That match is probably going to steal the show. Because th- you know what? Like, Scotty too hotty from the Attitude Era or whatever. But he was he he played his role well during that mm-hmm. time, right? He was just a goofball. That's all he was, right? Doing the worms over that. And, you know, Psycho Mike is just like a... He he understands his craft. This guy is is he's perfect at what he does, and I want to see some body slams. So like you know, I am uh, this. I'm not lying. This might seal the 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 show. This oh match. yeah, this this could be a lot of fun. Especially yeah. I mean, look, Scotty Two Hotty spent a lot of years as a coach and trainer. I mean, the guy knows wrestling, mm-hmm. and he clearly knows how to sports entertain. And look, Psycho Mike is the Smash Wrestling sports entertainer. Yeah let's face Agreed. it so this could be a really entertaining match um we also have a uh, women's title defense nikita is defending the title against uh, silesia sparks uh, silesia i uh, probably silesia i apologize for the pronunciation of the name if i have it wrong um she is a local toronto wrestler who also appeared on aw dark in 2019 I don't remember that, but uh, I mean, obviously, 2019 was a couple was years ago at this point. Um, yeah, we didn't see Nikita last time because she said she doesn't have to wrestle when she yes. doesn't want to. Good on her. Um, so yeah, it'll be good seeing her wrestle again because we didn't get a, a like a women's championship match mm-hmm. um, last time. So yeah, this will be this should be good. She's she's very good. Yeah. You get yes. her MMA background. Yes, I, I I suspect this will be her killing sparks, but uh, we shall see. Um, then we have the main event. We have Kevin Bennett defending his Smash Wrestling Championship against Von Vertigo. Oh, that's oh, okay, okay. So I said the Psycho Mike might match probably is, might seal the show, which it might. Mm-hmm. This this will challenge a hundred percent for that because uh, Vertigo is 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 fantastic, and Bennett just something about this guy, his charisma, everything. He's just so much fun. Um, mm-hmm. and he, he's a genuinely a nice guy. Like, <laughs> I love how he called us out last time. These people believe that was actually a nice guy. Whatever, Kevin Bennett. <laughs> um, but like, uh, yeah, no, it, like, I, I, you know, I'll be cheering for Bennett, but I'll also be cheering for Vertigo because he's so good. <laughs> so, oh yeah, Von Vertigo is insane in the ring. The guy's mm-hmm. built on springs, I think. I'm surprised yeah. he doesn't get Vertigo. No, um, true. And, oh, I bet he's never heard that one before. <laughs> um, oh. But uh, no, I love Kevin Bennett. Mm. He's 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 so amazing. Yeah, you're 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 yeah. right, Bennett. You pulled one over on us. At the, you, <laughs> we actually thought you were a nice guy. No, but seriously, yeah, amazing Bennett. talent, amazing wrestler. Um, I look forward to seeing him against another amazing wrestler. For me, I'm picking this as my potential match of the night on that card. But you're yeah. right, Scotty Two Hotty Psycho mm-hmm. Mike match could steal it. 
So we shall see. Um, but no, this this looks like a really good card. And I mean, I love these independent events. So, uh, you know, people, look, I don't work for Smash, okay? Any more than I work for Stardom or any yes. of the, or Kirkland uh, Coffee brand. <laughs> Kirkland you know? Coffee. So, he works for Costco. <laughs> <laughs> I work for Costco. Uh, yeah, no, I don't actually. The, um, but yeah, in all seriousness, look, tickets are available. SmashWrestling.com. Go get yourself some. Come really join us. Stuff. It's it's yeah. going to be an absolutely amazing show, and it really doesn't cost very much. Great place yeah. to bring the kids. Yeah. Anyway. So yeah, that is the uh, Smash Carve coming up. I have one quick thing before we go to your uh, AEW roundup. I have a very fast edition of Guess the Stars. Sure. So you remember last week, I picked Aussie Open versus Bishamon as my match of the week, mm-hmm. and it was Aussie Open winning the IWGP Title World Heavyweight Tag Team Titles from Bishamon, and I said, "Great match, blah blah blah." What do you think Meltzer gave this match, stars wise? I'm going to say he gave it four point two five stars. You're close. He gave it four point oh. seven five stars. Oh wow! Okay, okay, yep. okay. Told you okay. it was a good match. Then again, okay. he also gave the the MJF. Danielson match six See, and a bunch of stars. So. I don't, I can't, I don't understand his star rating. <laughs> no, I don't either, but that's okay. 4.75 stars. So. That's good. Mm-hmm. Yep. No, definitely worth checking out. Like I said last week, but, uh, but we shall get to more Aussie open later for now. We turn to Krishna's AEW round. I'm going to warn you ahead of time due to my conference and having to watch the Japan stuff. I watched zero extra AEW this weekend, so I did not see good. Rampage either. It's all good. All good. All good. So I'll give you some updates then. Uh, cool. So first off, um, as I always say that sometimes Elevation is the show to watch. Yeah, Elevation was the show to watch um, uh, based on Elevation versus Dark this week. Dark was okay, you know, I had a couple of matches, but like the ones I picked were actually from Elevation. The first match I picked was actually Kip Sabian uh, and the Butcher and Blade versus, and Bill, you're probably, you're going to obviously want to check this one out. Uh, uh, his name, sorry, the first guy's name is uh, Shunma Katsumata. Mm-hmm. The second guy's name is Yuki Ueno and Mao from DDP Wrestling. Apparently, DDP or DDT? DDT, DDT. Sorry, DDT. Is it DDP? Wait, wait where's the what's the Japanese one? Is DDT. It DDT, DDT, DDT wrestling. Then, yeah, they're from DDT. Apparently, Kip Sabian angered them somehow. That's how they claim the match was together. This match was great. These yeah, I'm not surprised. guys were awesome. I'm, I, Holy I definitely cow. have to check this out. They were really good. I was like, what the heck? They, they these guys like they put on a show and they gave them about I want to say like eight minutes to, to go like 10 minutes maybe but like kip sabian butcher and blade and the and these three these three young guys from japan oh my goodness they were good like fun match um i was kind of one the, the crowd kind of got into it but kind of weird crowd uh but i thoroughly enjoyed it like these guys were like flying out of the rings like the bucks and omega points i'm like oh my goodness these guys are good but yeah check it out the, like that was that's actually I would say uh, on, on Elevation, that was the best match that was there. And it was actually the first match that was on the show. Oh, cool. um, quick shout out to like the Renegades versus, uh, why did I put Kip Sabian? <laughs> the Renegades, Renegades versus Kip, Kip Sabian, Sabian and Marina Shafir. <laughs> the, sorry, the Renegades uh, uh, versus Nyla Rose and Marina mm-hmm. Shafir. Um, just a I, quick shout out, because I, I actually do believe the Renegades are so good in the ring together. Oh my goodness. I think, I feel like they should just be like a, regular tag team in like on AEW TV. Mm-hmm. Um one little thing like Marina Shafira is still looking a little bit green. Like after the Mox thing, I'm I, I'm giving her the benefit of the doubt, but she is looking still kind of green. Yeah. Even with surprised. the Renegades and they they're really good at working with people. But it, it was good match. Good match. Um and then a match I, I I didn't think I was going to enjoy, but I actually liked it. The main event. Um it was um uh, Moriarty and uh Big Bill. Right mm-hmm. versus Rex Lawless and Trax. That's right. The guy's name is Trax with a double X at the end of that. Of course, it has a double X. It's um, and this match was fun. This match was actually fun. Like, like, like Moriarty was good, but I actually was really impressed with like Big Bill. He was fun to watch wrestle, like, the, like a big style, but like he was still like, like they Moriarty and 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 Bill actually have 
pretty good chemistry together. They were actually doing tag team moves. Mm-hmm. Like, it was actually pretty impressive. I'm like, okay, good. this is really good. And, like, Rex Lawless and Trax, like, they they you know, they put up a fight at certain points, but mm-hmm. obviously they weren't going to beat these two. Right. Really, I, I enjoyed it more than I thought I was going to. Let's just say that. Right. So, so oh, I that's I had to good. give it a quick shout-out. Cool. Um, Jump over to, to Rampage. Um, obviously I have to give a big shout out to Aussie Open versus the best friends. This match was, was, was like, this match was great. This match was absolutely fantastic. Like Aussie Open and the best friends, they work so well together and Mm -hmm. Aussie Open, man, they're so good. Oh my God. Like these are like, I want to watch Aussie Open versus the Bucks. I want to see Aussie Open versus FTR again, I guess. Right. I want to see like the tag team division get pushed up some more and bring Ozzy open and let them let them fight right um but yeah this match like if you have to watch one match obviously watch this match that's it that that, yep. that watch this oh, match and i will because it's Ozzy open yeah exactly and then and then watch the Cape sabian butcher and blade and then yes. the ddt guys um then just a quick quick uh you know just quick shout outs to the fact that fdr came out they said they signed four year deals great um Matt Hardy announced that the the match <laughs> didn't really. Cl- he, I guess he clarified what what had happened. So it is going to be if they win, they're going to get released from the contracts. It's in a final deletion match. So interesting. Yep, yep. So final deletion match. So it's going to be the Hardy. I guess it's. I guess it's Hardy Cassidy. I said Hardy. Matt <laughs> Cassidy, Jeff, and mm-hmm. Hook. Okay. versus the rest of the firm in a final deletion match, which oh, might be cool. pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, in a final deletion match. I mean, yeah. are they doing I wonder if they're doing it cinematic style. I hope I so. I hope they're trying to go to that world. Yeah. Yeah. Um uh then I mean Emmy Sakura and Taya Valkyrie, like Emmy Sakura's had better matches. Like you can mm-hmm. check it out. I I'm not impressed with Taya Valkyrie, but that's just me. Okay. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe she's overhyped. I just not impressed. But I'll give her the benefit of the doubt for now for now. And again, I don't care about the TBS title. Like at this point, I don't care. So yeah. do what you will. Um, but one match that I thought was kind of funny was uh, Mark Briscoe, <laughs> Jay Lethal, Jeff Jarrett, and Satnam Singh versus SAP. Because like uh, Mark Briscoe is still a good guy. He's still questioning mm-hmm. whether or not it's a, it's a pretty funny storyline. Yep. He's still questioning whether or not he he wants to be in this group. And they're they're all just cheating and doing <laughs> everything they can. <laughs> Even at the ending when he wins, he's like. But why are you guys like at the, at the beginning they attacked the other guys and he's like why are you guys attacking them the match hasn't started yet and then the ending they kind of cheat he's like you guys are celebrating but you, you cheated to to get yeah. the win he's like just walks off so I'm like it's a fun storyline I, I I do enjoy seeing Mark Briscoe out there so that it, this is good um mm. uh, but the match itself was was good it was good it was it was listen when you open up Rampage with Aussie Open and the best friends really what's gonna what's gonna stack up to it unless yeah, you have right. the elite or somebody else on there right mm-hmm. and just the same thing with elevation you open up with kip and the ddt guys and you expect ddp and- DD- DD- no now look what i'm doing it man look DDT, i like right? ddp no it's ddt jesus DDT. bill yeah right you know why it's because uh i was about to say big show wow we're, we're killing today uh paul white said uh dd promotion so that's why i said i thought it was ddp right so DD that's why promotions I, yeah so i don't know what he was talking about but maybe he meant ddt um anyways those were my matches that was my my roundup for aew this week and listen if AEW decides to put another show on tv when am i going to find the time to watch that show right like you're gonna have you're gonna have rampage dark you're gonna mm-hmm. have uh, dynamite. You're gonna have this this new show, right? I'm like and and rampage five shows in a week. Really, really. Mm-hmm. All right. So, anyways, that was my roundup for right. this week. Yes, and I have now confirmed the men you were speaking of all wrestle for DDT. Yeah. Okay. So then then it was Paul White's fault. He said DDP. Okay. Unless I heard it wrong, it could be me as well. Oh. But he he said he said. Or maybe he said DDT promotion. That could be the DDT promotion. That would yeah. that would actually be correct. Yeah. Okay. So then maybe I was wrong. But okay. when you hear when you watch the match, listen to it, and maybe we'll find out who was wrong about that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> cool. I will definitely be checking those those at least those two matches out. Yeah. So. Very cool. So uh, next up, of course, we have the report from Japan. 
And I was going, I'm going to talk a bit, first of all, about Capital Collision and Collision in Philadelphia that happened on the weekend. Um, I can only give you sort of like storyline pieces right now, because of course these matches, uh, it was a pay-per-view, it was at a conference, uh, you know how that goes. So uh, I will be waiting for them to come out on New Japan's uh, Strong, the on-demand version of Strong. They will be posted there eventually because they are the North American shows. And when I get to see some of these matches, I will definitely give you what I thought of them, like I did with, uh, with the uh, Mercedes Monet and... Uh, and uh, why am I blanking right now? Oh, man. Anyway, the mercedes Monet match not that long ago. Mm-hmm. So uh, I was going to talk about Juice Robinson versus Fred Rosser. We have done that already. So I will move on to the uh, night one. We had the New Japan Strong Openweight Tag Team Championship match. It was This is the one that uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi got injured in. But the match was Aussie Open uh, versus Hiroshi Tanahashi and Kazuchika Okada taking on the Motor City Machine Guns, the defending champs, Alex Shelley and Chris Sabin. I will tell you right now, Aussie Open is this year's FTR. Oh, And it's about damn time. Because in all honesty, look, FTR is great. Aussie Open is a better tag team. I thought this last year. I thought it in their match with FTR. You know, I just, I feel like they're a better tag team. They are phenomenal. And they won the belts. So they are now dual tag team champions in New Japan. They hold both the strong titles and the IWGP heavyweight titles. So they are now a double champions. Um, so once I see this match, I will let you know what I thought of it. I have not seen it, of course, yet. Cool. Um, yeah, so that was the that's the those are the major news stories. As you said, Lance Archer the next day in Philadelphia uh, defeated Fred Rosser, thanks in part to Juice and <laughs> uh, Tanahashi and Osprey is supposed to happen May twenty first uh, for the other half of that tournament. Yeah, that's right. But he's got broken ribs, so we'll have to see what happens. Is it going to be a replacement? Does Osprey get a buy because Osprey's going to win anyway? Um, you know, they should just give him the free pass because it's Will Osprey. Mm. You know. Anyway, so then we move on to stardom. The semifinals and finals of the Cinderella tournament happened on the weekend, but they're not up on stardom world yet. So I will bring you the results next week, Um, but I can. Oh, and I will also attempt to do a separate show on Grand Queendom. As I said, attempt. I am not promising anything, (laughs) but I will attempt to give a show on Grand Queendom this coming weekend. So, Um, but you know what that means, Krishna? For stardom, it means we're going to talk about the Himika Retirement (laughs) Retirement Road. (laughs) That's right. First up, we have on the April 6th Stardom and Sendai show, Himika took on Nina Shirakawa. Krishna, did I mention I hate Club Venus? Look, I sent you their opening. I sent you their theme music today. You did. And And I I, I watched it. uh And I thought to myself, you know, maybe they're dancing like they're in a club, hence Club Venus. You said they were dancing terribly. I was like, maybe they were dancing as if they were in a club. I listened to the music and I thought to myself, but is this really worse than Tony Storm's music? A hundred percent. Because I'm like, this to me, it was just like background music that they were playing. Right. So I didn't, I didn't really care. Tony Storm's music just goes nowhere. And I'm like, what is happening? It's like someone sat and wrote the song. Someone sat and wrote the damn Club <laughs> Venus song. Are you man. sure about I that? Mean, it's, it's, it's just repetitive accordion music, man. It's <laughs> terrible. Terrible. I would rather listen to Tony Storm's music on loop. Oh, I can't believe you don't agree with me. I'm 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 deeply offended right now. Oh, anyway, Club Venus, they're terrible. Did I mention I hate Club Venus? I hate Club Venus. He hates Club Venus. I hate Club Venus. The match opened though, with Mina refusing a handshake, going right at her. Himika responded in kind, but uh, we got a bit of a story here. Mina working over Himika's legs, including a figure four leg lock. Himika sold the leg well in this match. Um, Mina tossed her out of the ring, hit a diving cross body. This was an almost miss because she undershot the cross body. She kind of oh, no. hit Himika across the thighs. But of course, there was the usual safety stardom group that kind of helped catch her and stuff. So that was fine. Um, but then Himika mounted a comeback. Uh, Mina cut it short again, going for the leg, got a second figure four locked on till Himika reached the ropes. She worked over Himika with a bunch of kicks and enzigiri. Um, but when she went for a roundhouse, Himika actually caught her leg and then hoisted her up into a, a power bomb, followed by a running knee for two. Um, she delivered an F5, but Mina reversed the pin for two. Himika then dropped her with lariats, another near fall. Mina kicked out, 
of a second F5. Mina then kicked out of the last ride power bomb. Um, that's the running one she uses. It's basically a last ride. Uh, Himika used a rainmaker and then pulled her up for a series of short arm lariats. Mina was essentially the walking dead. Okay. Like she sold really well here. Um, on the next move, though, Mina hit her with a surprise kick and the glamorous collection Mina which is a Mahistral cradle pin. And she got the three. Um, they hugged it out and both cried at the end of the match. This was a decent match. I really enjoyed it. Uh, Mina's a really good wrestler. I may hate Club Venus, but Mina Shirakawa can go in the ring. Um, she sold really well at the end. She looked like she was dead. Himika sold the leg well. It was a really good little story. Um, I think I didn't think Mina was going to lose this whatsoever because, you know, there's not a chance she was going to lose, given that she's building up to a white belt challenge against Sayaka Matani at uh, Grand Queendom. So uh, she's not losing the match, but this was a really good match, except for Club Venus's music. So, you know, it's totally worth checking out. Um, Himika just lays her out for that second half of the match. So that was a lot of fun to watch. Um, what's a what's a white belt challenge? Is that like a newbie? kind of challenging people no like the white belt i've been talking about stardom for months now krishna is the white belt an actual belt is that what they call it it yeah the white belt it's the uh, wonder of stardom championship it's called the white belt oh i didn't i didn't realize it's called the white belt like, because oh. i think you refer to it all the time it's the one yeah because wonder... i'm announcing the match officially i'll call it the wonder of stardom championship okay. i guess i, like, I just I, i'm just oh yeah it's the white belt yeah yeah it's like, but okay? no it's 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 their second title right the all right okay second ranked title behind the red belt the red belt being the um now my mind's blanking. What is wrong with me today? You know, I'm really tired. That's got to be part of the problem. My brain is just a fritzy little critter today. So, uh, yes, the uh, World of Stardom Championship, which is the red belt, the one that's currently held by Julia. Okay. Well, the second match in the Himika Retirement Series that was... Uh, Recent is Himika taking on Ami Sarai from April 8th, uh, Stardom in Aomori. And I apologize if I pronounced the place name wrong. Um, they, they shook to start it. Um, this was like Himika as like the powerhouse versus her heir to the throne as a powerhouse. So this was this could have been the equivalent of two big men slapping meat, but uh, <laughs> but way, way better. And they're women. <laughs> Um, they engaged in shoulder tackles, including uh, one on the floor that ended that uh, Ami just nailed uh, like a shoulder tackle bat on the on the floor. And uh, Ami body slamming him like, on the floor, shoulder tackling her down, only to body slam her again on the floor. Um, back in the ring, Ami chopped the hell out of Himika. I mean, her chest was bright red. And I mean, she's Japanese. It's harder to see the red, right? <laughs> and I mean, it was bright, bright red. Wow. And her, the top of her outfit too, if you've ever seen yeah. it, has a lot of gear, but you could still see the red through it. Oh, it was just, yeah, it was like, ow. Anyway, um, she, uh, she used her high angle Boston crab then on Himika, but she finally rallied and locked on her own single leg crab until Ami reached the ropes. I love Himika's single leg crab. You know, like I've said this before, it's like, you see wrestlers use a single leg crab and you're like, wow, that just looks like a lame version of the Boston crab. But the way Himika pulls it on and like wrenches and stuff on the leg and just focuses so hard on killing that one leg. Yeah. It's so cool. It's like, oh my God, that looks like you're killing them with a single leg crab. Very well done. Anyway, um, they went at it then with Larry. It's like just like running into each other over and over and over, ending of both women going down after repeated collisions. They traded blows from their knees then got to their feet again. Himika finally hits her with a back suplex and a sliding lariat for two, then a rainmaker for two. Ami came back with a strong series ending in a lariat for a one count and then a lariat for a two count. They went back and forth again, trading big moves and pins until Himika hit a running knee and the last ride power bomb. But Ami kicked out. She then took Himika down with two short arm clotheslines for the two for a two count and time ran out. So we ended up with a time limit draw. This was a hard hitting match. I loved it. These two women tried to kill each other. Um, good, strong match. I like the way they built up Ami Sorai. It's just like big powerhouse machine that can go for God's eye. I mean, God's eye is turning into just this absolute killer faction, right? Like you don't want to get in the ring with them kind of thing. And they've added Konami back too, which is kind of cool. What's that? Um, oh, sorry, what was the name? Say that name again? Konami. Konami, like the, the game company Konami? Her name's Konami. 
well, like, like the game company Konami. I guess like I didn't know there was a game yeah. company called Konami. Konami, they made Contra and stuff like that. Metal Gear Solid. Oh my goodness, Bill, get out of here! You're fired. Oh, you're your, fired. Your, Konami's your, clearly your, a wrestler in stardom. <laughs> Con- Konami. <laughs> Uh, is it, Krishna, is this a video game podcast? Or is it a That's wrestling correct. podcast? That is right. <laughs> well, my last match I'm going to recommend that people check out from the, this past weekend. And there are many, so I've had to just select a couple. Because um, let's face it, if I was really going to, I'd just say go watch every stardom show ever. And, you know, but I can't do that. You guys need to get the best of the matches. So, God's Eye, who I just mentioned, we have Amusori again, Mirai, Konami and Siri taking on Queen's Quest, Miyu Amasaki, Utama Hayashita, and uh, Saya Kamitani, and Izumi um, from the April 6th show. And this match was just amazing. It was amazing. It was it was everything you would expect from these eight people in a ring. Yeah, it's an eight-person tag. But, oh my God, like, Izumi and Konami open it up and just have this amazing high speed exchange of fast counters, mm-hmm. right? Then Ami and Utami go toe to toe. Like Utami's another one that just like doesn't back down, smacks the hell out of people, right? And her versus Ami, great stuff. Um, you know, Konami, uh, God's Eye ends up uh, double teaming poor Miyu Amasaki, who was the most inexperienced wrestler. There. She's only been wrestling a year. Right. But I would say that in terms of ability, she'd be near the top of the AEW roster. Wow. But in this match, she clearly was the most inexperienced person. <laughs> so, I love stardom. Anyway, um, as if uh, you guys were unaware of that yeah. fact. In Did the you first guys place. know that Bill, Bill loves stardom? Does anybody yeah. not know this? I know. <laughs> Konami actually uh, landed a kick on Mia's back and then put her in a camel clutch. Siri came in the ring and while she was in the camel clutch, kicked her in the chest from the front. It was oh, like, ah, uh, <laughs> Mio finally comes back against Ami though with a handspring elbow, drop kick, tags Azumi. Uh, but then Ami does her fast chops to Azumi and hits a pinning fall away slam. She has like a fall away slam where she doesn't let go of the person and just pins oh, them. Okay. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Um, before tagging Siri, Siri got an arm bar on Azumi, but then everyone piled into the ring. Uh, Siri beats on her for a bit once the ring clears, but Azumi actually uses her speed to take Siri down, tags Utami, who levels Siri with a seated lariat. Um, the Siri nails three hard kicks and they exchange German. Ger- I love it when they do this. Siri and Utami, when they go at it, it's like they just start trading German suplexes back and forth. It's so good. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, they go back and forth for a while until Mariah hits three running strikes in the corner. Mariah and Sai are back in the ring now, followed by a missile drop kick. Sai kicks her down. I mean, it's just, this was all over the place, right? Just everyone got so many good moves in. And I mean, Mio put on a hell of a show too. She had like a tornado DDT, uh, you know, Sai did her springboard plancha. It was just, yeah, I don't even know where to where to go with this other than the fact that it was a really, really good match. It ended with uh, Mirai getting Miyu in the ring because, of course, she kind of know was probably going to eat the pin in this match if there's going to be a pin. So uh, she did. Um, but she uh, she submitted to Mirai with the Miramari again. And my God, do they make submissions look realistic in stardom? I was just like, holy crap. I'm like, Miyu's screaming in it. She's like desperately searching for a rope. And then uh, Mirai locks a leg around her head just to keep her in place. And she taps. It was just... It was so good. Such a good match. I would strongly recommend this simply because you have two of the greatest factions in pro wrestling in the ring against each other. And so that's very cool. So yeah, those are my matches from stardom this week. I have a quick update from triple mania because as we know, El Io de Vikingo was defending his Mm -hmm. title in a four way this weekend against uh, Swerve Strickland, Rich Swan and commander. Um, He did retain the title. He pinned commander after using a 630 splash. What was interesting, though, was Meltzer noting that he uh, he's fighting banged up. Like, it's clear he's banged up because he's been mm-hmm. working so bloody hard recently. And so he's, like, he's slowing down a little, I think, because of that. And, like, you know, for, for him, it was a good match. But it wasn't, like, Vikingo's most amazing. The one mm-hmm. he highlighted, that Meltzer highlighted in the match was Commander. I haven't seen the match yet. Yeah. But um, apparently it was very, and Swerve apparently was very good in the match, as was Rich Swerve. Swan. So, yeah. Yeah, so Vikingo unsurprisingly retains his title. It's true. Yep. So that brings us then to our match of the week, Krishna. 
So, you know, on Ramp <laughs> Rampage, on um Dynamite, I had chosen Orange Cassidy versus um Buddy Matthews, right? It was a great mm-hmm. match. Like honestly, great storytelling, great, fantastic match. But you know me. Mm-hmm. I love a spot match all every now and then, right? Or like all the time. Um <laughs> and you don't say. I am actually gonna choose Aussie Open versus the best friends as my match of the week. I had so much fun. It was and, and honestly, the, even the Kip Sabian match. I had so much fun in these matches, but man, Aussie Open and and uh, and Best Friends just went at it. So they went like literally, Aussie Opens. They were walking to the ring and they were basically attacked by uh, by Best Friends. Like they jumped at them. So so yeah, fan, this was a great 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 match. I I enjoyed all the wrestlers in this match. Um, that's my match of the week: Aussie Open versus uh, Best Friends. Nice. Yeah, see, I'm at a bit of a disadvantage. I didn't see the AW matches this mm. week, so I can't call the match of the week. You know, I talked about a lot of New Japan matches, but I haven't seen any of those matches yet. Um, you know, the only ones that I've seen, of course, are the Stardom matches and Dynamite. Mm. So I have that to choose from for this week. And I think that I'm going to have to go with the Orange Cassidy versus Buddy Matthews match, which was exceedingly good. The selling from both or especially from Orange Cassidy mm-hmm. with the hand, Buddy Matthews working it over. I just remember how much I loved the story in that match, how well both guys both guys did it. I mean, look, the start of matches I watched this week were great. 100% worth checking out, but I don't think any of them quite got to the level of this Orange Cassidy. Oh, yeah. I forgot to mention too at the New Japan show, Orange Cassidy defended his, uh, on um, Sunday, he defended his title against, um, oh, this is going to bug me. This is going to bug me. This is going to bug me. Why am I continuously blanking today, Krishna? Was oh, that why they, I saw that on Twitter? Orange Cassidy in, uh, yes. but in the, New the, Japan is like... Yeah, he was. He defended his yeah. inter, his international title. And uh, the point was, he beat the guy he was up against. Who's, look, I apologize for forgetting the guy's name, but the main point of the match was in the crowd, right? Um, David Finley and um, Clark Connors, the two new, the Bullet Club guys. We're watching on. Mm, seeds are being planted. Mm-hmm. Yep. So there you go. So Orange Cassidy was being watched by the uh, David Finley's Rebel Club within the Bullet Club. So there you go. So yeah, um, that, w- that will be my match of the week. Orange Cassidy taking on Buddy Matthews. And that brings us then to Wrestler of the Week. I went back and forth um trying to choose between Swerve and and Cassidy just because their selling this week was just perfect, right? Um and I ended up just ending it with with Orange Cassidy. I feel like it, like that match and and the amount it took out of them to to beat Matthews um in in that match was was great. Like how many orange punches did he land and he hurt his hand and the selling and I thought it, I thought he was absolutely fantastic this week. So I'm going to give my my wrestler of the week to Orange Cassidy. I, I got to agree with you. I, I can't I can't fault anything you said. The, his selling was superlative, mm. just exceptional. And yeah. you know the way he wrestled that match, the way he he fought. It just Buddy Matthews was great in that match too. But I mean Orange Cassidy, just such a phenomenal phenomenal talent. And uh, yeah, just another incredible match. How how good is this title run? Been? Like how it's many amazing matches has Orange great. Cassidy put on in this title run? It's got to be one of the best title runs in AEW history. Yeah. I mean, if you go he back to like who everybody. everyone's fought and the quality of the matches that went on during it, he's had one of the best title runs of any title in AEW history. Which is probably why they're they're hesitant to pull it off him right now, right? Like we were like, oh my God, like I bit a couple times last mm. week. Oh my God, you have to see but yeah, he's had a fantastic run, and the people you're right, the people he's fought against. Yep. Wow, they, they, these are quality people. So oh, I know he's almost at the level of like Sayakamitani's white belt run or Siri's red belt <laughs> run, right? I mean, like these these are these are phenomenal uh, title this runs. Is, so, this is true. Zumi's high speed championship <laughs> run, right? I mean, it's it's had to throw stardom in had to throw stardom in there. Right? How I roll, dude. It's how I roll. Just 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 right, just wait till Grand Queendom next weekend. So. <laughs> Yep. Anyway, that though brings us to the end of our show. And as the great one always says, goodbye, everybody. Mwah! And good night. Bang. Good night, everyone.